from WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, it's Park Center. Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us on Park Center. We're very excited to have you here. Uh, we've got a great panel tonight, all unmuted. It's going to be fantastic. We've got Allison. Good evening, everyone. Uh, and Jill. Hello. And Kamila. Hi. And I want to say Pete. Si, va, co. And shout out to the Bay Lake Ballers. Let's go. Yay. Self-promotion. Let's make it happen. Um, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, and we are going to start by talking about the festival. There's a festival going on at Epcot. Uh, it's a very rare time at Epcot when there's a festival, but there's one going on right now. Uh, it's the Festival of the Arts. Uh, there's a lot of fun things happening, like they've got the Voices of Liberty out there doing the uh, Disney Songbook, and we've got lots and lots of food offerings, uh, and then there's lots and lots of cool stuff to buy. So um, because they are on scene in Orlando, uh, I was going to start this off with Mr. Pete Carney, and then we'll pitch it to Jill. What's up, man? Well, what are you thinking? Festival of the Arts is back. Um, this is... Um, usually one of my favorite festivals of the entire year. Uh, the crowds are not as crazy. Um, you know, this started off five years ago as just a weekend event, kind of a trial, and people loved it. I went crazy for it. The food is presented beautifully. Um, usually the food, I think, is prepared a little more meticulously, so I just think that presents like you eat with your eyes first. So I think it translates to the flavor as well. Um, I think the um, fun art pieces on the sidewalk and the paint by number and the step in photos are a lot of fun. Um, it's a different year. It, obviously, like, you know, we're still in the middle of a, a crisis and a pandemic. Um, and this is just a taste of Festival of the Arts. So this year, um, if I'm going in with reservations, I think it's still a good festival. It's nice. I'm happy it's there over nothing. Um, I just think there's a little bit of a drop off this year, and I'm hoping it bounces back, like I've said about every other festival. But yeah, I'm really excited that it's back. Um, it gives me more reason to go to Epcot. Um, the artwork is stunning and beautiful, and I still think, out of the taste of food and wine, and the well, flower and garden ended abruptly, but we kind of had a taper off when we came back of merch. This is still, I think, the best festival if you're going to rate all the taste of festivals. Yeah, Jen. that is one hundred percent my opinion as well. Uh, having been to Taste of Food and Wine and then Taste of Festival, the holidays Taste of Festival, of the arts feels the most close to the non-Taste of Festival, the real festival. Um, I I don't feel like there's that many fewer food booths. I feel like a lot of the um, like. Pete was talking about the chalk art and the stuff on, on um, they have cool stuff like butterfly wings on the construction wall so that you can go stand in between them and take pictures. Um, they have, while they don't have the Broadway concert series, uh, they have the Voices of Liberty doing the Disney songbook, which is uh, arguably the best part of the entire festival. There's a lot of really good parts of the festival, but cool. they're like just, I caught them Sunday night. I was walking around World Showcase, and it's weird because they're, if you look at the picture, they're they are dressed in like this sort of business casual kind of thing. Um, and so like walking up, you're like, is that really Voices of Liberty? And then you hear them and you're like, oh, that is most definitely Voices of Liberty. It's breathtaking. They're so good, especially like they do songs from Tarzan and Moana. Um, they do When You Wish Upon a Star. If any of those are your favorites, you will go away just, I left sobbing. I was just amazed by it. It was stunning. They're fantastic. Um, was so there having a, them back is fantastic. Was there a lot of wind this day or is there like a fan on the no, stage to make a moment cool? It was cool? very windy. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. very windy um, today. Um, yeah, if you watch the live stream too. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like there's some kind of like, you know, effect going on to make them look just, you know, fantastic, but it's a little bit too, uh, too on the point. Um, yeah. Sorry, Jill. Go ahead. No, but I, I mean, the food is on point as, as Pete was saying, I think they take, I, I, and I think this has been true. This is the fifth anniversary of Festival of the Arts, actually. It's kind of, uh, you almost forget that it's, it's been around well, quite that long in, in comparison to some of the other festivals. Um, but they always seem to 
you know, save the best for festival of the arts. Everything looks fantastic, especially. There's no argument about that. Even the things that don't taste that great still look fantastic. They've got that crazy um, uh, Zen rock garden dessert in Japan. Um, they've got the, even though the carrot, <laughs> the carrot, if anybody watched the live stream yesterday, the carrot margarita that Jason made me drink. Um, but they've got this crazy, it's got a bubble on top. It's, it's insane. Like there's, they just do so much creative here that they don't do for, um, that I don't think they pull out all those stops the same way at other festivals. Allison, Kamala, anything on the festival? I'll respect the buzzer. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. works. that works. Uh, okay. So there was a, there was a, a Josh tomorrow sighting and it's, it's, it's hard not to do the whole da -da -da. Great, great big, da -da -da. beautiful uh thing but josh tomorrow was in uh, epcot and he was talking to guests so this was basically the only actual meet and greet that was happening uh and it was with <laughs> josh tomorrow so you know the the cool thing to me about this is that like looking back in the past of of you know people who uh were in charge of the parks this is the first guy i've ever known who i would want to meet in the parks um you know he is a personality now at least among you know all the disney fans and and people really get excited about meeting him and uh one of the people on our panel actually got to get a selfie with him yesterday so uh jill did you want to talk about that it was awesome um so i <laughs> there we go there's me jason i was like jason we need to go get a selfie with josh um, we had just started, well, actually, no, they had, uh, Jason and Axel were live streaming. I was coming to meet them. Um, I came in through International Gateway. I was walk. they were in Morocco. I was walking up and so they were waiting for me and I, and Eric was there as well. So I come up to them and we only just all get together as a group for the first time. And all of a sudden Axel's like, that's Josh tomorrow. And we turn around and Josh tomorrow is 15 feet away from us. And it was like, oh. Uh, and he was talking to a woman. Uh, there was a woman in ECB, I think it's in one of our pictures, and he was like kneeling down to talk to her. He was talking to her for a good few minutes. But you could see as he did that, other people were walking past and recognizing him. Uh, and actually, I think that little girl there, the her mother and her did a selfie with Josh afterwards. Like people were, you are absolutely right when you say it's a meet and greet. People were like waiting around in clusters to talk to him, to get a picture with him. Um, and he was so kind about it. Like, so Jason and I went up and said, Josh, can we get a selfie with you? He was gracious about it. He did it. And then Axel had the camera and Axel said, hey, we're Disney vloggers. Uh, can you say, we got a ton of Disney fans watching. Can you say hi? And he did. And he was so cool about it. Um, and then so we, we walked on and let him talk to other people. You know, we didn't want to hug his time. And then later we, uh, we stopped and we're doing some festival food and stuff. Uh, we stopped and watched Voices of Liberty. And so later he was down over by Italy. And it was like the line for the Italy pavilion had turned into a line to meet Josh tomorrow. Like, I mean, people were lined up. It was like a meet and greet. It was crazy. But it, I to mean, be I think fair, the though, the line was just as long at the Chapek dunk tank. Um, when I said that to Jason, I was like, free ball for five dollars. They were lined up. They made a ton of money. There it is. Oh. oh, we should tell him that if he thinks that's a good way to make money. I mean, people would pay more than three for five to, dunk to dunk tank Bob Chapek. But I said that to Jason. I'm like, do you really think that people ever came up to Bob Chapek like this? And then I was like, wait, Bob Chapek was never in the parks to come up to him like this. Like, that's the difference is. Josh actually wants to be in the parks among, like, among the what he is in charge of. And that says so much to me compared to the way Chapek would, like, pop in for five seconds and then, like, flee. Bob Chapek yeah. is also not TV president handsome like Josh DeMauro. And I feel like that's a lot of the reason. It's just like, I'm just like drawn helps. to this guy. It's just like like this amazing like uh, hairdo, and, and the color of his hair is so distinguished. And he's like, "Hey!" And it's really natural. And it's like, "Yeah, I would want a selfie with that guy too." Don't want a sel selfie with sweating Bob Chapek. <laughs> I've seen tomorrow in the parks a few times, and just to kind of hammer in this, I mean, Jill kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, I remember when we were leaving the Christmas one of the Christmas nights, the characters were waving goodbye up top, and you would think, like, everyone's camera would be up there. And he was standing off to the side, and there was a bigger crowd to take a picture with Josh tomorrow 
than pictures of the character saying goodbye up on the train station. Like, that should say something. The only thing I'm kind of curious about, and this is, I mean, you mentioned he was a handsome-looking lad. Um, would he be as popular? And plus, we're going to talk a, a lot of the things coming up on the show are pretty negative. Um, I wonder what piece of that is Chapek and what piece of that is pressure from Chapek to tomorrow, Chapek to tomorrow, um, to say, where are you cutting corners? How are you saving us money? I mean, we love the guy, and don't get me wrong, I'll take any glimmer of hope over Chapek. So, you know, I'm definitely on team tomorrow, but I wonder if he wasn't as handsome or if he wasn't as personable, would we love him as much with all these things Disney are taking away from us over the next two Well, let's take a look at his Instagram. I mean... Oh, God. Look at that fella. And, I mean, and he rocks the work outfit. I mean, he, look at him in the boots and the, and the gloves out there at Avengers Campus putting that together. Uh, you know... Definitely. If things don't work out for Disney, I mean, he'll definitely be the next Bachelor, right? I mean, a hundred percent. I don't think he. I like. I feel like his wife would hate that, but I. I don't know. I mean, is he a Bachelor? I feel like he's not. Um, ABC owns Disney. He's gonna have to take one for the team, or uh, the other way around. Disney owns ABC. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so let's uh, let's go from uh, you know a shot of Josh to a shot in the arm. Hey. Uh, vaccines. You know, there's this big, huge open property um, out in California. Nothing's really going on with it right now. Um, Kamila, any ideas of a good reason uh, for people to come out to Disneyland when it's closed? You know, I feel like this news released late at night. I think it was Monday or, or Tuesday. The days are all coming together at this point, but um, this is something that when the news broke about this and that Disneyland would be a site, it genuinely made me smile. And I would just say, Disney, this is how you flip the script because I was one of the people that was disappointed when they decided to very publicly kind of go after leadership in California for not being allowed to reopen. Um, and I think, you know, there were some people that had genuine concerns that California was going to really struggle with this pandemic in the later months, which, by the way, it is. Um, and so, you know, I, I always thought that that wasn't the right move. Even if they were upset about not being allowed to reopen, they, you know, for them to so publicly go after leadership in California. So this is how you flip the script, because I'll be honest, even though I think Disneyland could be a really interesting site, I'll be curious to see operationally, you know, how they do it. Are they, you know, are they putting people in Tomorrowland and lining them up? Like I just, you know, are they putting them in queues? Um, so I'm excited about it. I'm very interested to see operationally what it looks like, but I'm also glad that they were able to step up and do this for the community um, because things are really bad in California right now. And and I think that they earned themselves a little bit of bad, uh, bad will and bad publicity for the general public. And this is how you, you know, show that you are a community partner and you want good things. And by the way, the more people that get vaccinated, uh, you know, and things, you know, cases start to go down, the more people that can safely start planning their trips and, you know, get back in Disneyland and Disney World. So it's a win-win in my, in my book. Yeah, they, they are showing that it is the uh, Toy Story parking lot uh, that is going to be the Super Pod location. So unfortunately, I'm not sure that you can uh, get this by the, uh, by the corn dog wagon. Um, that would be kind of cool if you could. <laughs> uh, but this, uh, the you news. Ex yeah, exactly. The news extends from there that now they're talking about this happening at Disney World as well. Um, where are they going to put something like that, Pete? Oh, man. I was not prepared for that question, but I have so many ideas. Um, <laughs> it could be, uh, since they stopped, uh, let me think. Oh. I, you just sprung this on me. Like I mean, the... I, would shut, I would shut down the lime garage because, I mean, it's useless anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's talk to Jill about this that. instead of, uh, of, uh, of Pete uh, real quick because uh, lime garage is, a, is, is it's too important. <laughs> well, I mean, Orange Garage has the easiest access off of four. It's the largest Facts. garage, and it's the Facts. dumbest garage for springs access. So Facts. repurpose Facts. it for Facts. other Facts. access. Fact. <laughs> Guys, let's get realistic. I, if you, we need like Google Earth for this to, to see a good site. I mean, I, I think it was genius the way they used um, the site right behind Animal Kingdom, um, the old like creative. Um, I, I did an audition there once. But for where they're doing the back, um, I'm sorry, the COVID testing now. Uh, so I mean, without Google Earth, I mean, there's got to be tons of parking lots what that aren't being stars? used. Well, this this uh, 
This rag of a, of a website I'm reading actually suggests that the vaccine distribution would go great where the testing is currently. So create, instead of having the testing there, enough, switch that. Know, but you still need both. You can't, you can't substitute vaccines for testing. You still need testing. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's enough room. Vaccine. I mean, it's just what it says on this blog that I was reading. So that's, I mean. I mean, it's a suggestion, and we make great suggestions at times. But you asked our opinion. I'm just saying, I don't think I'm yeah. parking that part. I can't speak tonight. This is what happens that's when I drink tea. I can't oh. speak. Sorry. Typhoon Lagoon? That's an or, interesting option. Or maybe you know what? ESPN, yeah. the sports complex. But that opens March 7th, doesn't it? It doesn't that open in March. So really, you'd only have it for a month and a half. Uh, why set it all up just to take it down? Yeah. I think I think Blizzard Beach is March. Yeah, I do think, I mean, between resorts that are still not open yet and the water parks and um, and that dump of a garage they call Orange, um, or you know what, <laughs> let's just throw it at Grapefruit. Let's just throw it at Grapefruit. Let's put it over there. Or, Actually, uh, Grapefruit's probably the best idea, Yeah, if we're so, being serious. Yeah. Grapefruit sure. garage, no one cares about Grapefruit, they say in chat. It's true. Let's, let's just use the Cirque yeah. tent. They're not having any uh, performances in there right now. Oh, no. Drawn to Life thinks they're opening this year. So uh, Actually, the casting parking lot um, right next to the building has been empty, you know, on the other side of the bridge that they don't mm -hmm. let you walk over, uh, over yes. Disney Springs. Um, that's been pretty empty right next to the Speedway, and it would be easy on, easy off. You could have them come in one way and out the other. That might work over there, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Disney owns so much land that we don't even know about. I'm sure there's, like I said, tons of parking lots. The Cast Connection parking lot, uh, you know, behind the scenes over by the laundry facility and the, the textiles building back behind Disney University. No one's going to Disney University right now. There's just tons of parking lots. Disney can pick whatever. This is, yeah. this is just a fun guessing game. We'll start a pool. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's move on to this news that we got about the Magical Express. Obviously, there are a well, lot... A lot. Uh, it's, it, it, hold on. Just hold on. Uh, there are a lot of amenities that have been going away. They've removed the free magic bands. That's not a thing. Free luggage tags. That's not a thing. And now free, uh, free travel to the resort. Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of Magical Express for me personally. I'd rather rent a car and drive so that I can be in control of when I arrive and when I leave because with Magical Express, you have to be picked up so early to go back to the airport. Uh, that's always been a little bit disappointing to me. But, I mean, there are so many people who rely on this and it's part of the package that they put together um, when they're planning a Disney vacation and they're coming from far away they, they're flying into MCO. Uh, this is this is a, a necessity to get people from the airport to the parks. Why end this? And this, it's not just a necessity. It's also like, you know, um, there are a lot of families that come to Disney that don't travel with their whole families with kids very often. And so it's, it's just this huge convenience to make it so that you're going to arrive, your luggage tags are going to be on there. Like you don't have to worry about anything. We're going to take care of this for you. And it's like one of those incentives that just like takes a little bit of the burden off because planning a Disney vacation is already really complicated when you have to worry about getting fast passes and dining reservations and all that stuff. If you don't have to worry about like the logistics of this kind of thing uh, for a lot of families that don't travel a lot like this is a big deal I haven't used it in like 10 years but the the uh, feeling when you get on the bus like of your your vacation has started is like part of the magic of coming to a Walt Disney World vacation especially if it's something you do only once uh, every couple of years or so and so to get rid of this is just like it's just one of those, all right, here's just another magical thing that's going and something that is convenient and serves a real purpose um, and is really important. Yeah. Yeah, I will say I loved the Magical Express. I have used it for every single trip. Um, I'm not a Florida local uh, or an Orlando local, so I always have to fly in. Um, and I would look forward to the Magical Express, and I know some people have had bad experiences. They've waited a long time. I cannot remember ever having waited more than 15 minutes um, to get on one of my buses. My line has never been long, and I've always enjoyed watching that cheesy, outdated <laughs> video they play. Yeah. Um, to, you know, get to my resort. And by the way, I one of my best memories and one of the things that really made me fall in love with Disney was I had a trip where um, 
I got off the Magical Express and cast members uh, met us who were getting off at this resort and they cheered for us and they welcomed us. And I just remember being like, wow, like this is so nice. Um, and the kids who were there were just absolutely loved. They were like, wow, where are we? Um, so I definitely, you know, from a, from for me, it impacts me personally. I, I've never gotten to Disney in a way that wasn't the Magical Express. Um, I've heard there's toll roads if you try to drive. And also I've heard Flo Orlando drivers are terrible. So uh, that scares me. But All also um, from a travel agent, from a travel agent perspective, um, this is a huge loss because so many people who are planning a trip to Disney are used to it being all in. They want the dining plan. They want to, you know, fly in, be whisked away in the bubble. Um, and it, it's going to be tough. I can only hope that they're going to replace it with something. Um, even if it's something paid, I think many people uh, would do a, some type of paid add-on. Um, the other thought that I have about this is, for a lot of people, you're kind of forced to stay in Disney when you take the Magical Express because you don't have easy access, you know, out of the Disney bubble. And even if you're going to another park, you're taking an Uber there. If people are having to rent cars and, you know, do things like that a little bit more, that makes it easier to stay off property. It makes it easier to go off property. Um, and that's money that is leaving Disney. So, I mean, I'm sure they've thought about all of this, but this one hurt. Uh, for me personally, Did this one really hurt. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to make much. Well, well, it doesn't seem to make much sense. I mean, this is the thing that, like, if fifteen years ago didn't exist, and yet when they made it, it was like, well, this is a perfect solution. I mean, you've got these cool-looking buses, and like you said, the cheesy video, uh, and you know, it, it's no fuss because you know that's how you're going to get there. You follow the signs. They take your luggage. It magically appears in your room. All of that stuff is very, very cool, and it just seems like this is a need they're going to have to fill somewhere else. And obviously, it's not going to be minivans. So that's not. Gonna to be a thing so you know you're right like this opens up the opportunity for other businesses right so uh, i'm sorry pete what said, were you gonna say no i was gonna say like and I, we've, i've said this many times on a lot of different shows i'm sure i said it here is that when you go to disney we go there because it's different from other theme parks and it's slowly becoming more of just another theme park more of a six flags or a universal and i think you uh, she said it perfect where you said you come for that bubble the minute you get off the plane you go there you're already started your vacation the cast member greets you you're getting stickers it's again for me i only used it one way most of the time when we would come down when i lived in new york um, because we would always want to stay in the parks right up to the last minute get on the bus three hours early uh and then just take an uber or whatever but i mean this is a giant loss and you're taking people out of the experience now i get that the train is coming but the train's not coming until my guess 2023 and you're ending this at the beginning of 2022 uh so that's a i don't know what they're gonna do for those 12 to 24 months without transportation the fact that you're asking people to take cabs um, or find their own transportation blows my mind. I mean, it's this again. It's Uber there's Uber. Uber. No, and Uber's a like, great. I honestly, I started taking Uber all the time when I was coming more frequently, and it was just me and Lauren because um, it was only like 35, 40 bucks. But now, especially during the pandemic, I took an Uber home from the airport. I don't know last week, and since there's not that many people driving for Uber anymore, the Uber price was sixty nine dollars one way. So I mean, like you're look. That's and I had to pay it because I needed a ride home from the airport. Uh, so it's, it's it's Disney that places, regular... with, first of all, don't for a second think that if you were paying for a Disney vacation package that in, or a resort stay that includes Magical Express that you weren't paying for it. You were 100% paying for it. They just folded that cost into your room. That's why even the value resorts cost so much now. That it's like you can't you you'll never get a room at Disney for under 150 bucks and Magical Express is part of why. I mean the problem with this is Disney's not going to cut their resort cost or resort prices now that Magical yeah. Express is no longer part of what you get. But the other problem is I think Disney was facing a massive cost. Either one of two things: either Mirrors was going to. I mean. You say 15 years ago in the outdated video, these buses haven't been updated in 15 years. They're they're old, they're, they need reupholstery badly. They need new theming. No, but you love new that new smelly bus thing. smell. I love that old smelly <laughs> musty no smell. Bus. It reminds no, me of Disney. No. You know, like smell the Florida air and yeah. the air and the mud. I will just say another great point because this is something I started to do when we came more often and I wasn't willing to spend yeah, I was going to be in the parks all day, so I didn't want to spend 200 plus a night in a hotel room. 
Uh, Kamala makes a great point. Staying off property is dramatically cheaper, and you can be just as close. And now rent a car. I mean, cars are cheap to rent in Orlando. We did it all the time. And we would get rooms for like 80 bucks. They were decent, not not like stingy in a weird area. And we were five to 10 minutes from Disney and rented a car for 20 bucks a day. Uh, and now with the age of Airbnb and how many Airbnbs just living here are so close to Disney where you can rent an entire house for 150 bucks a night instead of a hotel room. I mean, Disney is going to lose money here. And a great point by Jill, like, we were in the middle of a pandemic. They took away all payment. They took away every year this year, and park pr ticket prices have never come down. So if you think we're going to lower prices because you're not getting transportation, you're out your damn mind, child. Yep, absolutely. So here's here's something that's that's changing, but it's not necessarily going away. It kind of is. Extra magic hours are being replaced by early theme park entry, and the idea is that you would be able to get in as a as a uh, resort guest. You'd be able to get into the park 30 minutes early um, to each park every day, instead of it being the which day you know which park is extra magic hours, which one's not. Um, you know, I I have always found myself sort of avoiding the extra magic park hours because I feel like people were leaning towards those, and those might be more crowded. Um, so I, I feel like maybe. Um, this is this is, I guess, a good solution to be able to break it up, but also at the same time, I hate mornings. So the idea of getting in there 30 minutes early is not too exciting to me. Plus the fact that, like, <laughs> what is this do? Um, and, and I don't know if you've ever done rope drop, Allison, but what does this do to rope drop? Like, is that a thing anymore? Yeah, I mean, that's not sort. Of, that's not the way I usually do parks anyway. I don't really care for rope drop, and I try to avoid um, the extra magic hour parks. Um, what I really miss is just like you ride night, <laughs> like, like that's what I, how I like to experience right, yeah. um, extra time in the parks, and they just like that's not what happens anymore. Uh, I, 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 yeah. This I mean, this goes and is going to probably change the calculus of how I build my days. Um, one of my tricks is like, oh, if there's a party at a pl park that night and I'm not attending the party, I'll go visit the park during the day because it's usually not as busy during the day. Um, and one of my tricks is, okay, look who has extra magic hours and go to another park. Um, right. So it's going to change slightly the calculus of what's going to be busy. But um, for like my everyday experience in the parks, probably not that much. Um, but I don't know. There's something, there's something that still feels like a loss here. <laughs> Well, let me, let me let me move this to Kamala. Kamala I, I want to ask you, and, and you were about to say, I'm sure, what does this mean? Like, are do you guys use this as like, you know, a, a tool to get people yeah. excited about different parks? Is that where you're going with this? Well, absolutely. So I would say um, it's definitely something that you would promote as a perk to staying on property. You know, oh, you, you stay on property, you'll get this extra time in the parks. Um, uh, I will say, you know, I think of all the things that they're cutting recently, this is probably one that hurts the least, just because I don't think uh, as many people do take advantage of it. Um, the 30 minutes, I think, is difficult. But the other thing that I have been thinking about this is, increasingly, Disney World feels like it's operating like Disneyland. And at Disneyland, um, if you're staying on at one of the resorts on property, you do get this early uh, time in the park, but it's actually logistically very difficult to take advantage of, especially in the age of Rise of the Resistance, because Disney didn't do a good job of separating out the lines for people who are resort guests trying to get in versus people who were just regular guests trying to get in. So you spend most of your, you know, quote unquote, hour th or 30 minutes, whatever it is, just trying to get into the park. Um, and other people are also in the park. So logistically, from what I always observed, at least at Disneyland, this was very difficult um, because of rope droppers. And, you know, there just aren't as many people staying on resorts there. Um, so I, I, I don't think the 30 minutes is enough. Um, I w the one thing I will say is I wonder if resorts um, impact, or sorry, reservations impacts this because you can't have extra magic hours when you're forcing people into a reservation that they've made, you know, months before. So I wonder if once a reservation system eventually goes away, this goes away and it looks more traditional, assuming it will remain a perk. Also, I'm just coming from like a planning thing when I used to come down and like, I'm a super planner when I go on vacation. So we were always, I would read all the books and all the travel guides and I, I touring plans. I'd have it all. And I'm sure Camilla 
deals with this all the time as a travel agent. I can't imagine dealing with this a bunch of me's at once. Um, but we would always avoid the extra magic hours because that's where everyone would flood to in the morning, we felt like. And we would rope drop another park because everybody was already at extra magic hours. So now that you can pick and choose anywhere, I, you kind of lose that strategy, um, for one. Also, what really, what good is 30 minutes? I mean, if you think about it, that's one ride. Because you're going to bum rush one ride, and by the time you get off, all the other guests are coming into the park. So really what Disney's saying is, you can go on one ride before everybody else, and that's really it as the perk. Because if you think about it, no matter, unless you're picking, like, Dumbo, you're going to go to that, that e-ticket. Once you get off, everyone's coming into, like, me who, stay, who lives nearby is coming into the park and going to run to that other ride as well. So, I mean, to me, this really just says, congrats, you get one ride before the masses. Rob? Robert? You're, you're muted, Rob. Robert? I know, I know. The, this is the one that's sad for me, is Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. I, I love this. I mean, the idea that you would go in and you would get, you know, you get your free cards, uh, you had the map that you could go and, you know, take a... It, it was kind of like it was a people eater, but it was an adventure inside the Magic Kingdom. Um, I, I, I loved this, op, like, this offering. I thought, you know, it's great that they're doing the cards. The cards became collectible. There were times where I would sit there and, you know, get, get my cards and see people, like, when it first started with, like, binders, like, waiting to see if they could trade with you. Um, and then they kind of took off with that and they added some more things to it. Uh, I, I just, I think this was a neat thing that didn't seem to be that cost prohibitive. If it was the cards that were a cost problem, you know, I mean, it does need a cast member to stand by every window to do it. But if it was the cards that were a cost problem, maybe they could have just phased the cards out instead of the whole thing. Um, again, this one's very disappointing for me. I don't know if any of the rest of you guys feel the same way or not. I always wanted to play it. I just never did. So I'm sad I don't have the opportunity. Now. Yeah. Um, it surprises me because they clearly invested a lot of money in setting this up. I mean, some of the, the, the stops where you activate the cards, I've only ever played it once and for a few hours. So, and that was a while ago. So I am maybe part of the reason it's going away and that like there's so many people that don't use it although at the same time like it's not like you could have every guest in the park trying to do it but there are just such elaborate uh like interactions that it's surprising that they would spend the money on it and then just take it away like i, I agree if the co like you've already invested that money why not just let it continue um and just not offer new cards anymore i think that would people would be far more accepting of that than just taking it away. It just, it doesn't make sense. And especially in, in relation to the way Universal does the Harry Potter ones. And gosh, that is probably, I mean, maybe like Chapek is just pissy because Universal did it so much smarter in that Universal figured out how to monetize this and makes like, I can't imagine what a killing they must make on those wands. They're so expensive. It's a little piece of plastic with a little chip in it. Like it's, it's gotta be it's so insane. Money. It's an ATM. Printing machine. money, exactly. So like, and, and, but I get Disney didn't monetize this, but at the same time, like when you take it away, there's one more, it's like Pete said, Disney's just becoming every other theme park. This is one more way in which Universal is now better than Disney. That Universal has this really cool interactive experience and Disney had one and they took it away. You know, they had this and they had the pirate adventure over in Adventure. I was about to say that. And then they also had the, uh, you know, what was Kim Possible that became uh, the um, Agent P and then now it's supposed to be DuckTales. Um, so, you know, these are things that they've done before and they, and they don't. And I think the thing that has always been kind of cool is none of them required that payment. None of them required you to spend a lot of money on a wand and, and created the haves and have nots with the people who couldn't afford those expensive wands. So, I mean, to me, I always loved that this was a thing. Hopefully there's just some evolution still to come, but they've got like the store windows on Main Street or, you know, those screens are hidden. I mean, so many of those little hidden things where you feel like you've discovered something in the Magic Kingdom is what makes that so special. And you see little kids doing it and they're holding their little cards up. Uh, and when I say little kids, I also mean me. Um, you know, it's just, it's really a, a neat thing to do. And another thing that eat is a people eater. And now maybe it's a bad COVID situation because people would gather. I don't know that. Um, I, I don't know if that's something that would come back or not, but it just, it's very disappointing to me because I loved this offering. Um, 
And and also when the uh, the holiday parties, uh, there would always be a, a very you know like a limited edition card that you'd get. So, kind of cool. Anything well, else on this? If I can just add one little thing on, only because Rob said everything I was going to say anyway, and those are brilliant points. Um, is kind of what Jim was going to say is my thought when I first heard this was not that Sorcerers was closing, that it would be a retheme to literally finding a way to make money like Universal. That was my first thought when I read this article is okay, now Disney's going to sell something, reprogram and rewrite or whatever, repro I don't know the tech term for it, but reprogram those to. something where you literally have to buy something and then you take an adventure mm -hmm. because the technology is there. Like like you guys said, like why not, why would they close it? Just keep it going. I think instead of like a sorcerer where this, you know, not a lot of kids know who Merlin is anymore. Um, you know, I think that's super, you know, more of a deep track now. Uh, is make it something where kids and families do now, or make it a destination, or where you have these special effects, or add more special effects besides just the windows, where maybe it, it does like you know how that rains around you, or water fountains go off. Uh, I think this is what Disney might be doing at this, because what else are they like? Literally, what else are they gonna do with this? Um, so I think I don't know. My guess: stay tuned in like a year and a half, something might pop up because money. Yeah, I uh, agree. Well, uh, and there's something else that was that was uh, that I know for a fact was pitched for that attraction as a replacement at one point that would have been really cool, but we'll talk about it in the post show. Um, so, Magic Kingdom Hotel, uh, the two Magic Kingdom hotels, the Polynesian and now the Contemporary, are both being uh, refurbished uh, for our future enjoyment. So you've got uh, this, the, uh, the pictures that we found of people moving uh, mattresses and furniture and things into these Moana hotel rooms. They've got all the scaffolding up. They're doing a whole like overlay on these to be, I mean, they've gone down to the studs on these. So this is, this is big time uh, renovation. On the other side of the lagoon is this, uh, like they were testing out these, um, Incredibles rooms and doing, you know, talking about an Incredibles overlay. But this is, uh, according to, again, this website, WDWNT.com, they're saying that <laughs> this is going to be more of a soft goods, very short um, uh, renovation or refurbishment instead of the full boat like we're seeing over at the Polynesian. Um, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about um, all the IP overlay. I think that most of us feel like there's too much IP coming all the time. Uh, but Jill, what are your thoughts on these uh, hotels? I think it's sad because, I mean, and I love Moana. Like, Moana is probably my favorite Disney movie of the last, like, 10 to 15 years. Um, but I, it, one of the things, and this is happening with everything in Disney, where it can't just be really cool, it has to also be IP. And so I think one of the things that especially made the, so some of the resorts like the Polynesian and the Contemporary so unique and desirable is that they are themed and feel like a whole other world into themselves, especially the Polynesian. I mean, the Polynesian is just, you know, you walk in there and you feel like you are in the islands and it's just amazing. And it's not any specific island. It's like Disney's version of Polynesia. And it's just, it's magical. And it, I feel like trying to put IP in there, take some of that away, take some of the magic and the transporting away and instead just makes it feel like they want you to look at more of their IP and buy more of their Moana merchandise. And it's not about that Disney, it's not about creating that Disney, that world anymore. It's just about selling you something. Okay, I got a question, Pete, construction guy. Why, why are they taking these down to the studs here? Why, why, what is the purpose of that? I mean, I feel like the poly is not, I mean, it has had a renovation in recent times that it doesn't need that. Uh, I mean, why would they go down to the studs here? My guess, and this is just literally a complete guess, is sheetrock holds moisture and moisture creates mold. And sheetrock um, is a great place for mold to live, especially between walls. And you can see, I think that was a wet wall, which is where, you know, pipes run in between. So if a pipe ever leaks or sweats, um, any kind of moisture, and Florida has the perfect conditions for uh, mold to grow. So by going down to the studs, if you're putting up new sheetrock um, or new paneling, whatever they're going to put here, you can kind of nip that mold in the butt or at least start fresh. Um, so that's my guess because, again, mold 
will grow rampant, especially here in Florida. It's perfect conditions 80% of the year. So you may as well just rip it out, put a new gypsum board up, um, which is sheetrock, and uh, start fresh. See, so uh, when it comes to these hotels, I feel like they don't need the overlay. Like, I get it if it's like, you know, Port Orleans uh, Riverside, because it's like, hey, what can we do to make that cool? Oh, we'll make these like, you know, these princess rooms or uh, Caribbean Beach. Uh, let's make pirate rooms. But do you really need for these like deluxe marquee hotels for there to be a, a reason like this to come? And I get Moana fits nicely, uh, and I would probably stay in a Moana room just to see what it was all about. But um, I, I feel like, you know, Jill, you said this, like, this is one of those places where you kind of get lost in the theme, right? Um, this is, the, now you're going to be in Moana, not in the Polynesian Islands. Will they, will they rename some of these buildings after Moana too? Uh, I would stay in Kakamora. <laughs> also, my, my concern is I just hope that, I mean, I never knew this was a thing until I lived here. But people are obsessed with making sure they stay or see in every room. So, like, I, my friends literally just booked rooms that, like, last this past week at Art of Animation because they weren't in the Little Mermaid's. Tom Corliss. Oh, Corliss, too. I mean, obviously, Tommy C. Um, but a lot of people that live down here are like, oh, we haven't done the car section yet of Art of Animation. We haven't done the Lion King section. Or we haven't done Little Mermaid. So now it just becomes, instead of like, oh, I stayed at Art of Animation, it's like, have you stayed in every room? Or have you stayed in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s of pop? Have you stayed at the and then and now you just keep doing this at other hotels? So now instead of a one state hotel where you've done it, now you have to stay at that same hotel three or four times to experience all the rooms. And again, this is I don't think something that most families do, but I noticed it as a trend down here, and it's wild. It blows my mind. I mean, you could actually probably speak to it better than I can. You book hotels for families all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think to your point, I don't see that many people uh, who are interested in the themed rooms. And if anything, when I see that a room is themed um, that's available or that would fit a certain family, I kind of let them know, like, hey, it's a pirate room. Is that okay? Hey, it's themed to the Little Mermaid. Um, uh, it's kind of 50-50 on, you know, people who care, people who don't care. But most people, uh, I think, are more interested in the theme of the resort um and then the room just being comfortable and clean um so i i don't see a huge need or market for the themed rooms okay uh well we're about out of time but i do want to uh give a shout out to our wigs thank you very much for being a wigs member jill can you tell us a little bit more about wigs wigs is the wdwnt inner globe society uh, it is our uh, special fan club where you get extra content, you get um, you get core bucks sometimes, you get extra shows like Detailed with Tom Corliss, uh, you get all kinds of goodies, and you get access to our Discord channel where you can talk with other wigs and with staff, uh, all starting at as little as $2 a month. Go to patreon.com slash WDWNT for more information. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we have 308 people on right now, and we have 101 likes. If you guys could just, just click that button with a thumbs up, we would really appreciate it. We want to do as much as we can to pass any of um, uh, of our sister shows because we're a little competitive. So uh, if you could uh, <laughs> give us a like, we would love that. And uh, thank you guys so much for spending your Wednesday night with us. If you are a Wigs member, we will see you in the post show. So thanks again, and see you soon. See you,